Okay, so we have the sampling distribution of p hat. Remember, a sampling distribution is the distribution of values taken by selecting all the possible samples from of the same size from the population, right? That's how we get our sampling distribution. So the sampling distribution of p hat is approximately normal, and it gets more and more normal as our sample size n increases. So since it is normal, we can have a mean, so the mean of p hat is just p, and the standard deviation of p hat is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n, all divided, all taken the square root of. Okay, so before we can use a normal approximation for our p hat sampling distribution, we have two rules of thumb that we must check. So if we check these two rules of thumb and they're true, then we can use a normal distribution to approximate our p hat distribution. So rule of thumb one. Now rule of thumb one is not going to appear on the AP exam, but we are going to talk about this in our course. So the rule of thumb one is that the sample size times n is less than the population size, less than or equal to the population size. We're not going to, the reason it's not on the AP exam is we're never really going to know what the, exactly the population size is. Okay, so rule of thumb two is extremely important. So rule of thumb two has two parts. N times P needs to be greater than or equal to 10, and N times 1 minus P needs to be greater than or equal to 10. So this is essentially to ensure that our sample size is large enough so we actually can use a normal approximation. So if these two things are true, then I can go ahead and use normal CDF, um, and you're good to go. Okay, so let's do a problem. So it says, suppose that 85% of all dog owners will feed their pet a special diet at some point in its life. In an SRS of 150 dog owners, what's the probability you will find 80% or less? So what we're looking for is right there, probability that 80% um, or less is found. And we also know N equals 150. Okay. And again, we're looking for probability that X is less than or equal to 0.8. So let's check our two rules of thumb. Our first rule of thumb, thumb is n times 10 is less than or equal to the population size. So 150 times 10 is 1,500, and that's less than all the dog owners out there, we presume. Okay, so rule of thumb two, n times p is greater than or equal to 10. So n is 150, and p is 0.85, and that ends up being... 127.5, and that's greater than 10, so we're good to go. Next one is n times 1 minus p, which is 0.15, has to also be greater than or equal to 10. And for that, we get 22.5, and again, that's greater than 10. So that means I can use a normal approximation for this distribution. So um, let's go back to that first slide. We said if we can use our normal distribution, the mean of p hat is, they tell us, 0.85. The standard deviation of p hat, we have to calculate. So that's the square root of 0.85 times 0.15 divided by 150. So I have 0.85 times 0.15 over 150, and I'm going to square root all of that. When I do that, I get a standard deviation of 0 0.029. Okay, so I have a, a mean, a standard deviation, and I have a probability that I'm looking for. So I'm going to draw our normal curve. I'm going to say it's normal. My mean is 0.85. Standard deviation is 0 0.029. And I'm looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 is about right here. And I'm looking for that area. So I'm going to use second VARs in my calculator. I'm going to use a normal CDF. My lower bound in this case would be negative infinity. My upper bound would be 0 0.8. And then my mean and my standard deviation. When I do that, that area is 0 